Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That actually happened in AD 70. <clears throat> and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, A, when shall these things be? And B, what shall be the sign of thy coming? And C, and of the end of the world. Three different questions. You got that? And Jesus answered and said unto them, okay, notice they just asked him about end times and when all this stuff's going to happen. Jesus' first response, take heed that no man deceive you. So that had spe specific reference to being deceived in the end times about it being the end times and what was going on. And then everybody comes out with all these, you know, prophecies and everything else about this is this and this is happening and that's happening. Nope, that ain't this. Okay. Now notice he said, for many shall come in my name saying, I'm Christ shall deceive many and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Okay. See, now here's our job. See that you be not troubled. He just said that. He said in these last days, these things, when, the, when these things start to happen, he said, see that you be not troubled. And so here's, here's how to do that. He could have easily said, turn your TV off. <laughs> you got that? Because that's how you get troubled, right? <clears throat> and it's amazing. Okay, you can't, you understand, you, you should know the signs of the times. I, you know, you, I get that. At the same time, you cannot preach doom and gloom if you're a, cre a Christian. Why? Because there is no doom or gloom for Christians. You understand? We have been saved from the wrath to come. Now notice there is wrath to come, but not for us. You got that? All right. Now watch. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war, see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You got that? Now watch. I'll show you. For nations shall rise against nation, ethnos, ethnic groups will rise against ethnic groups, and kingdom, nations, governments, countries, against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, not the end, not the end of the world. You got that? Matter of fact, there will never be an end of the world. Now, technically, now this word world here is actually a, a word, anos, which actually means the end of the age. Okay? There will never be an end of this world. Now, it will be remodeled. It will be completely renovated. And you may have to go live somewhere else in the meantime. While it's being renovated. Does that make sense? Okay. He's not going to change the dirt under your feet while you're standing there. Okay. Then, now watch, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity will abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Notice the connection between living in sin and love waxing cold. Okay. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now watch this. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So what's the main sign you need to look for? All these other things are signs. Those are all the beginning of sorrows. The main sign is that the gospel, the gospel of the kingdom, not every other gospel, the specific gospel of the kingdom, which is the gospel Jesus preached. That gospel shall be preached to every nation. Then the end shall come. So if you want it to hurry up and get here, start preaching more. Do your job. Get us out of here. Amen. Don't leave it all for one or two people to do. Now watch. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Now watch. 
Then he talks about fleeing into Judea. But now notice, because Daniel had um, the, the, the 70 weeks, and it was for a time, and then that stopped, and now it gets picked up and carried on and finished out at the end of time. But I just want to get to this point real quick. Notice how Jesus brings Daniel into the last days. Daniel is the, Revel is the book of Revelation for the Jews. You got that? It's the book of Revelation for the Old Testament. In other words, the book of Daniel details end times. So if you go back to the book of Daniel and find out the vision he had in the end times and the statue and the iron and the clay and the gold and the silver and all that, okay? And then you'll see the many-headed beast and the leopard and the, all these different, it's all right there in Revelation and Daniel. So those two books are almost identical, okay? In, well, in every way they pretty much are. But here's what I get to. Now, and I'm going to cut to the chase because there's a lot more here. Matthew 24 talks about all this stuff to watch for. Matthew 25 is all about, you better be ready. It's about people, well, what do you say? Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, five foolish. He's saying, listen, I just told you all this stuff's happening. So know that you need to be ready for it when it comes, all right? Now, but now notice, if we go all the way over, I want to go all the way over here, cutting through all this. In Daniel, now this is the key. This is the key. Daniel chapter 10, in verse 1, it says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel. A thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar, and the thing was true. But the time appointed was long. In other words, a long way off and not for right then. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Notice how many times the word understand or understood is there. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. How did he mourn three full weeks? He was fasting, fasting and praying. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is called Hedekel, it's also known as the Tigris River. Okay? Now, he says he lifted up, then this, this, well, the, a vision of a man came to him. He describes him. It sounds like Jesus out of the book of Revelation. All right? Now, this would be called a theophany. This is whenever God manifests himself in human form, uh, and especially before the incarnation that we just talked about, where Jesus came in the flesh. Now, Here's the thing. You know, and you've, we've all heard this story. He said um, in verse 11, And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee. So he just tells him, understand. Okay? And stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Okay? But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, twenty-one days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief priests, uh, princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. So they had fight going on until he finally broke through, and was able to get there. So there is a war, a physical war, that these angels were doing. You got that? Now look at verse 14. Now, this is the key to all of this. Now I am come to make thee understand, watch what he says, what shall befall thy people in the latter days? For yet the vision is for many days. In other words, the vision you've seen, Daniel, is still a long time off. And I'm come to show you what will befall thy people. Notice he didn't say my people. Thy people. Who were the people of Daniel? The Jews. Do you get that? So the vision of Daniel affected the Jews. You got that? Not all people. The Jews. Now, 
Then, if you tie this in with Revelation, that talks about the Antichrist, and it tells, it gives us specific things about where he shall reign, what are the limits of his reign, and if he was reigning the entire world, there would be no limits to his reign. If he brought a complete peace everywhere, then there would be no battle, okay? Now, here's the thing. It says, you're going to hear about wars and rumors of wars. Don't let your heart be troubled. He said, this isn't the end. In other words, he said, this is the beginning of sorrows. Is that right? So, but now notice, because he says, you look, you hear that, you'll know this is the beginning of the end. He says, it's going to be like birth pangs. That it's going to be happening, and it's going to happen more and more and faster and faster, and the time between is going to get shorter and shorter until it seems like it's constant. Right? This is why Paul uh, told Timothy, and he talked about perilous times, that the Spirit speaks expressly in the last days about people deceiving and being deceived and all these things going on. And he says it's going to get to a point where it is so perilous that you're going to feel like you're trapped in the middle of something. And you're going, there is no way out. There is nowhere to turn, nothing. There, there's no hope, basically. And they said, you're going to feel like that's what's going on because society itself is going to be so bad and will have lost all of its moral compass. Okay? Now, understand, that is now. Why? Because we are in the last days. Last days started on the day of Pentecost. And it's getting worse and worse and worse, and it's getting constant, and it's going forward. Now, here's the thing to remember, though. Because he said, and, and um, okay, it says as long as you're hearing about wars and rumors of wars, know that it's the beginning. Not the end, the beginning. Is that right? So what is another thing that says we're there at this point? Matter of fact, it says in the last days, last times, the word used there is the same word where we get our term eschatology from, or a study of last things, or a study of last days, we could even say. But he said that it's going to be so bad, okay, that there's going to be things going on. But now here's the thing. It says that, that's not what to watch for. Why would you want to watch for the beginning of sorrows? Because we're all talking about the end of stuff. Isn't that right? But he said, what you want to watch for is when men say, peace, peace, security, peace. It's, we have peace. He said, then you know that sudden destruction will come. So the, the, the things we have to realize, and the Pharisees knew the Bible. They knew it so well, and they completely missed the person that the entire Bible is about. We've got to make sure we don't do the same thing. All right? We've got to make sure that we be not troubled, that we don't let our heart be troubled. Why? Because men's hearts will fail them because of the things they see coming upon them. There's all kinds of stuff that we could talk about. I'm sure I'll be talking more about this as we go along because I see too many Christians getting completely distracted, Mark chapter 4, the cares of this world, all that stuff going on, and every day somebody's got another piece, ooh, this, ooh, that, oh, that, oh, it's terrible, it's bad, you know, let's, okay, run to the mountains and hide. I'm all for running to the mountains, I love the mountains, I got no problem with mountains, right? But I ain't going up there to hide, amen? I've got one job, preach the gospel of the kingdom. And nothing should distract from that. Anything that distracts from that is not of God. You got that? All this stuff. Why did he tell us in the book of Revelation? He said, the things that were, the things that are, and the things that shall be. And then at the end, he says, come Lord Jesus. Isn't that right? In other words, it's all wrapped up. But he wrote it so that we would not fear. He gives us prophecy so that we can be secure. All right? So that we can know. And when we see all these things coming on, this world, what does he tell us to do? Look up. Why? Your redemption draws nigh. So we are to have peace, even joy in the middle of all this. Now, it's hard, I'll admit, having joy when you see the pictures and the things that the news all brings out, right? But you have to remember a couple of things, and I'm not saying this or that is, you know, true, not true, and all that kind of stuff. I'm just saying that, okay, I'll put it in this analogy. Never trust someone with your health 
who makes their living off of you being sick. All right, does that make sense? Okay, by the same token, never put your future hopes into people who make their living off of making sure you're so scared that you can't turn the channel because you got to watch the next bit of news that comes out. Their job is to put fear in you. Their job is to try to make you afraid and to make you so afraid that you got to watch every second of the news. So don't put your faith in them that they're even going to tell you the truth. Why? Because they go from one news cycle to another. And what, you know, like they say, if it bleeds, it leads. So if they're, they're going to try to get you into a state where you have to watch them, right? And if you're watching them, you ain't reading this. Just that simple. Amen? So if you think it's the end of the age and this is it and it's all wrapped up and it's all going to happen and they're all, all this stuff, then you ought to be acting like it. If you really believe it, you will act like it. What does that mean? If you believe this book and you believe it's the end, you will act like it and you will get out there and do what this book says and be living this book and preaching this book and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and getting people saved. Because if you're not doing that, you don't believe this or you don't believe the news.